Hello, I'm Dr. Connor Bell, and I teach bassoon at West Texas A&M University. This video is to help you prepare for the 2023-2024 Texas All-State Competition. This video is for number 41 out of your Weissenborn book. Allegro con fuoco, Allegro with fire. And except for the very end, fiery should be one of the things you're going for. Um, First thing you should be looking at in this one, because there are a lot of pitches, there's a lot of notes, are opportunities to break it into smaller chunks. Never work on this one by saying, oh, I'm gonna start at the beginning and I'll, I'll work on it, I'll play until something goes wrong and then I'll fix it. Um, if you do that, you might never get around to playing the end of this. Um, so make sure you always have a plan. If you're on day one, Maybe you're working on the first like 16 bars until we get to that double bar at the Tranquilo. And then you're working on the next however many measures until we get to the recapitulation um, halfway through the piece. And then maybe you're working on the recapitulation through the ending. Make sure you always have a plan for this one because you don't want to always be treading the same ground. Know which parts you struggle with and spend more time on those. Uh, check your roadmap uh, directions because we're not doing exactly what it says. We're um, not doing the repeat in that final section, the B-flat major section. We are doing the di capo, but we're stopping at the B-flat double bar on the third line instead of going all the way until the fine where it's actually printed. So it's a very long etude as it is. You'll probably have cuts. Uh, when you're actually doing your competition, but make sure you're comfortable with that adjusted roadmap um, that's been suggested for this one. Two really important concepts with this one. Make sure your dotted eight sixteenths are always dotted eight sixteenths. Even if you start off really well at the beginning, uh, it's easy by the time you've gotten to like the 50th line of this thing, for however long it is, uh, that those start turning into triplets. Just because you're tired, your attention gets elsewhere. So make sure you're always thinking da 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 da. You could even practice, especially while you're under tempo. <laughs> that subdivision will get its way into your ear and even when you're playing it at tempo as written your brain will still be going dun, 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 and then you'll have good rhythm the other thing you should be going for is contrast we start allegro con fuoco with these forte dynamics dotted eight sixteenth rhythms we've got accents and all kinds of um exciting things then in the third line, we drop to piano and it says tranquilo. That should be a big noticeable change for your listener. And then when we go back to the ah tempo, um, when we're doing the, the recap, the return of that opening material, you should change gears immediately back into that con fuoco attitude. Also, in the last two lines, uh, where we go to B flat major and we're marked leggermente or lightly, um, it should have a very different feel. It should be more of that tranquilo, tranquilo feel. Um, it's marked at 144 to 160, which is pretty quick. I like it better close to that 144 uh, mark, but you should play it at whatever tempo you can play it very cleanly and with great rhythm and with a lot of security. Don't, and especially if you are trying to get it fast, spend a lot of time working on it very slow. The longer you spend working on it slow, the faster you'll eventually be able to go. Um, and also for the last two lines, the leggermente, I don't slow down, but kind of like we were talking about in the earlier D minor etude, I think of it as kind of being on the back foot. Instead of always driving forward in those confuoco sections, we're a little more relaxed in that same general tempo.
Thank you.